should ask you to confirm, um, yes, that it's okay to proceed. Uh, this is for the purpose of, uh, we're hoping to make this webinar available for anybody who isn't able to attend today and then for future uh, marinas and folks interested in the Clean Marinas program for the future. Um, as many of you probably are well aware, uh, our entire team is uh, restricted right now to telecommuting and are unable to perform in-person outreach events, uh, workshops, or site visits. Um, so what we tried to do is, uh, instead of having our in-person workshop, uh, we are moving it to a virtual webinar. Um, we'll explain a little bit more later. Uh, this is a little bit different than our traditional certification process for marinas, so we'll talk more about how that plays into this year, if you are a marina that's interested in becoming certified or, um, recertified as a tiered uh, marina. Um, so we'll go into a lot more of that in a bit, but I wanted to go over first um, some housekeeping items uh, for anybody who is not familiar with Zoom. Uh, this is a, I've, I've been using this for a little while, uh, but some of it is intuitive, some of it does take a little bit of uh, getting used to. So you should be seeing uh, the slideshow right now with uh, some slides on how to use Zoom. And I'm gonna scroll through here just to go over some uh, controls here for the Zoom window. So if you can see, I should have a, a scroller here. Down towards the bottom of your screen, typically in Zoom, is a toolbar. Uh, if you hover over, you should have a microphone uh, that would allow you to unmute at the end of this uh, webinar for our Q&A session or start your video if, um, if you cho so choose at any time. Regarding those audio controls, um, traditionally what Zoom uh, I think reverts to is having both the, comp the audio and video um, as well as the screen sharing going through the computer. However, if you have issues with internet connectivity, what I recommend is one, uh, shutting off your video, which you'll see I'll do in a short bit just to make sure um, I'm coming through loud and clear on the presentation. And then you can also switch to phone audio, which you can see if, if you select the arrow next to the unmute button, um, you, it, what that would do is it would then give you an option to dial in uh, via phone. Um, it will likely show that you're connected to the computer. On the other hand, if you are already called in, um, you can uh, disconnect or you can choose to connect to the computer uh, via that option as well. Um, so you either can leave the computer audio to switch to phone audio or you can choose to go from phone to computer. Again, I recommend if you have um, kind of a, a slow internet or a um, low bandwidth uh, probably calling in via the phone, and that way you can view the, the webinar on the computer. All right. The last thing I'm going to go over is uh, the participants window and some interactive options, if you so choose. Um, under, there should be a participants box that you can click at any time to see who is on the webinar. Uh, it also gives you the ability uh, via that window to mute or unmute yourself and to turn your video on and off as well as raise your hand. Um, so if you have a question at any time and maybe you, know, you don't wanna enter it in the chat box window or especially in the Q&A session at the back um, at the end of the webinar, uh, if you wanna raise your hand, you can do so uh, that way. And then finally, in a chat box window, uh, that is also down at the bottom in that um, toolbar there. You can choose at any time to send a message to the entire group. Um, you just, when you pop up the chat box automatically, it's set to send to everyone. And you can also, uh, there's a drop down there. And if you'd like to have, let's say you know somebody that's on the webinar or you'd like to ask an individual question to Paul, Heather or I, you can select us directly and chat with us directly at any time. So. That, as long as this is moving forward here, make sure my screen is, there we go. Okay, so before we get started, um, I wanted to take a chance to introduce our team. Um, so I asked Paul and Heather uh, to have their video on so that you can see all of us. And um, if you haven't already interacted with our program, get to know us. Um, so what I'm gonna ask is for all of us to introduce ourselves, um, kind of what region we cover and, and um, where we're from. So my name is Sarah Orlando. Um, I'm actually from the Cleveland area. My office is in Sandusky normally. Uh, again, we're telecommuting uh, given the current situation now. And uh, I manage the entire program for the state of Ohio, 
but my marinas that I mostly work with are the Lake Erie watershed marinas. So I'll put myself on mute and then Heather, if you wanna go next. Hi, um, I'm Heather Sheets. Um, I am from Athens, Ohio. I cover the Ohio River watershed. So um, I'm the program coordinator um, and my office is really my car, but I do have an office at Mount Gilead State Park. Um, and I've been with the program since uh, 2015. Hi, my name is Paul Dravillis. I'm the program administrator and I provide administrative support to both Sarah and Heather. Um, so providing support really at a, at a statewide level and I've uh, been here um, working with Sarah and Heather um, and on the Ohio Department of Natural Resources staff uh, just for the past handful of months. I started at the end of September, so still learning. Uh, it's been awesome. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free again to message me during the webinar. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, so uh, Heather and I are going to take turns covering pieces of the presentation here. Uh, Paul's going to be fielding some of the chat box questions and then putting some, you'll see throughout the webinar today, we'll be sharing some links and then I'm going to try my best to share files actually through Zoom. Um, we'll see if that works for us. And that way, hopefully this will be somewhat engaging. You can get some resources uh, to leave with you today. Um, and then again, we'll have a Q&A session at the end where we can uh, kind of have some more follow-up questions or even specific topics that you're interested in that maybe we didn't cover today. Um, so with that, I'm just going to cover how we're going to go through things. Um, we'll have a Clean Marinas program background. I'll cover uh, kind of where we've been and where we are now. Um, Heather will cover then our incentives and benefits to the program as well as our clean boater program initiative. And then I'll go over uh, how to become a certified clean marina, as well as our current checklist, which is new, I will say, for those of you that um, haven't interacted with us since about 2018. Uh, we now have a base gold and platinum tier available for our marinas. And then Heather will cover uh, our current projects, so some of the things we're working on uh, before we then go into a Q&A session. So. This works here. So I'm going to go ahead and shut off my video again so that my internet works well and runs this for you all okay. All right. So Paul and Heather, I may have to have you chime in, but um, what I'm going to do first is there's a great video put together by the Great Lakes Clean Marina Network um, that covers the Ohio, or excuse me, the Great Lakes Clean Marina programs and it's really a good introduction to what we do. Um, so Paul or Heather chime in. I have this window, but let me know if you can see the YouTube browser if it's still on my PowerPoint slide. It is currently still on the PowerPoint. Okay, so let me stop and I'm just going to switch over to the YouTube video here. Give me one second, folks. Okay. Is that better? Um, yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we'll let this run. Just for just a few minutes here. Boating is all about enjoying the great outdoors. Fresh air, sun, sunshine, and most importantly, clean water. And there's no better place to boat in the world than the Great Lakes. But it's up to all of us to keep these Great Lakes clean. And a great way to do that is to support clean marinas. Anybody that's in the marina business needs to be in part of this program. It's very important to make sure this marina that was a clean marina and a clean harbor. Although we were doing a lot of things right and being clean, there were some things that we just weren't thinking of. You don't have to worry about oil slicks besides your boats getting all messed up. At first, it involved some time and paperwork, but now it just goes along with the rest of our environmental practices, the rest of the way we do business. If you see one of these clean marina logos, you know you're doing business with a marina committed to environmental best practices. Everything from managing wastewater, to preventing fuel spills, to recycling used oil, batteries, and solvents, to making sure boaters have easy access to recycled bins. But if you dock at a clean marina, be prepared to do your part. 
because you're only as clean as your boaters are clean. Well, clean marinas are not only good for the environment and our Great Lakes, they make for a top quality boating experience. And for marinas, a healthier bottom line. If you have a cleaner marina, your value is going to be greater. So if you ever do decide you want to sell or have other investors, they're going to look at your product, which is your facility and your land, and it's going to be worth more. Is it selling point to you? Is it, is it? Yes. We keep our boat here because it's a clean marina. We have our children here. Our boat is sitting in the water. It's worth paying extra for a clean marina. Would you rather be in a clean marina than one mm -hmm. that's not certified? Mm -hmm. So you'd say that's a selling point? Yeah, I think so. Being a clean marina can help promote your business in ways you'd never expect. Take me. That's just a sort short snippet there. I'm gonna switch back to the PowerPoint here. Okay. So that gave you um, just a brief overview of that. Honestly, the video that we put together a couple years ago um, that was led by a group with Michigan Sea Grant that interviewed a number of current certified clean marinas and some boaters in the region. Um, I will say that that was when Ohio uh, was restricted to a Lake Erie watershed program. We now are statewide in uh, our clean marina program, uh, but it should give you just an idea of, of kind of the importance of being clean marina and why marinas and boaters participate and support this initiative. Um, so the core concept between, behind the Clean Marinas program is it is a voluntary incentive-based program. Um, it is entirely non-regulatory in the fact that this is not an enforced or regulated program. Uh, the mission of this program is to recognize marinas for a lot of times doing the things that they already are doing. Um, but just maybe not getting credit for. Um, and then uh, in many cases, what we're finding is, you know, we maybe help through our technical assistance and the education that our team provides, we help marinas um, maybe tweak a few things, a few practices on site um, to truly meet our, what's called our clean marina uh, best practices or BMPs, best management practices. Uh, and then once certified, the marinas are recognized. So we promote marinas. Um, we have actually certified clean marina programs or clean boater initiatives in every state in the Great Lakes. Um, so we, our, our staff promotes it internally throughout Ohio, but then know we have a network of clean marinas across the Great Lakes that then co-promote our certified clean marinas to boaters who are maybe traveling to marinas or transient boaters who may be traveling across the Great Lakes region. Here we go. Um, so I've been with the program since 2011. Um, you'll learn more in a minute, but our program actually started really the beginning is 2003, 2004. Um, but over the years, I've been able to talk to the marine owners about why they're engaged in our program and why they stay with our program. Um, and, you know, I'm just being honest, you know, you have the warm and fuzzy, um, you have people that, that know it's, you know, they're doing it because it's the right thing. Uh, but then we also have, as Heather will go through in a minute, uh, benefits and incentives to being, um, you know, financial incentives and, and other benefits to being certified. Um, but when I talk with marinas and I talk with our certified marinas, I, the key thing I try and get across is um, marinas have a unique opportunity. They are essentially the last chance any sort of water runoff has to be managed, treated, or um, impacted before it reaches a body of water, whether it be Lake Erie, whether it be an inland reservoir, or whether it be the Ohio River. And so marinas through the Clean Marinas program are not only able to use our best practices to enhance what they are doing on site, but I truly feel that they can use that opportunity that they are capturing runoff from their marina and lots of other places upstream to say, hey, not only am I doing everything as a business on my property to make sure I am not polluting and I am protecting and enhancing the local ecosystem, but a lot of times I've taken care of other people's runoff um, or trash or what have you. Um, and so I truly hope marinas that are engaged in the program take that opportunity to talk to their community members, to talk to their local uh, decision makers and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm really going above and beyond um, what is being asked of me. And, and that's where our marketing comes in. And that's why, um, you know, we feel marinas 
that are clean marinas deserve to be recognized through this program. So just for those of you that are not familiar with marinas, uh, we've opened up this webinar to both marina owners, but then also anybody who really is interested in learning more about the Clean Marinas program. Um, while again, as I said, the majority of our marina owners that we work with through this program are doing the right thing, there's sometimes with um, the eyes that our, our program have, staff has, you know, we are trained in trying to identify sources of pollution and then to help marinas implement best practices to address those sources of pollution. So just going down through, this is not an all-inclusive list, but just an example of some of the sources of pollution at a marina. You have boat washing areas where if uh, there are vessels that are using copper-based anti-fouling paints or any sort of anti-fouling paints that could have uh, heavy metals running off, that could be a potential source of pollution. Uh, blasting, sanding, and painting areas, if you're not using um, proper containment, uh, that could be a source of debris that ends up in the waterways. Material handling and storage, so hazardous waste, things like that. Engine maintenance and repair, making sure that it's done properly. The dry dock areas, both in how your staff um, manages those areas, and then if you allow boaters to work on their own boats in those areas. Parking lots, now this is obviously not exclusive to marinas. Uh, there are parking lots all over, but uh, any parking lot is, is definitely a source of potential pollution if you have cars that are leaking or, or just debris that they're carrying from the roadways. And again, the, the key with marinas, as you think about it, is they're by the water. So um, basically a lot of what's being generated on site, it's, there's, there's not um, acres of maybe forests or wetlands or, or areas where this um, runoff could be infiltrated or treated before it enters the lake. Um, there's usually a lot less space between that parking lot and the waterway, for example. Uh, fueling areas, again, in the same way, fueling at a regular gas station for your car, and if you have a fuel spill there versus fueling on the water. Um, you know, again, there's not a parking lot or maybe a grassy area where your gasoline could, could get slowed up or, or evaporated. Um, you know, if, if, a, if a vessel owner is, is fueling up their vessel uh, and they have some drops of gasoline, maybe uh, they overfill the tank, that goes right into the water. And then general yard areas, again, whether it's your staff that are conducting maintenance and work in those areas, or if you have boaters that are either doing work, or even if you have landscaping going on, if you're using herbicides, pesticides, things like that, that could all be sources of pollution on site. So some examples of ways that our program can work with you to help uh, have a positive environmental impact include, we work with you on suspended solids, which essentially is sediment that can cause turbidity and carry heavy metals with it to the water environment. You can decrease pollutants that can accumulate in water sediments in the aquatic food chain. That has impacts, you know, at the base level food chain all the way up to um, us humans in terms of for anybody that does eat fish that are living in that body of water. Uh, we can help you decrease biodegradation, which can lower dissolved oxygen. Um, in Lake Erie, there's a number of factors, but there's certainly best practices that marinas can do that actually, you know, if a number of them were able to do them, they could help with the dead zone, for example, and areas of low dissolved oxygen on the bottom of Lake Erie. We can help you decrease phosphorus and other uh, Im important nutrients that, again, are, we're trying to manage in, in small amounts that are helpful in a lake environment. We need primary uh, productivity to occur. Um, but in some cases throughout Ohio, we have an overabundance of nutrients entering our waterways. And so we can help you, again, manage those nutrients so they're staying on the land and staying out of the water, which can assist you with any algal growth if you have issues with that. And then finally, decreasing oil and grease, which can enter the water and harm aquatic life. Um, and there's a number of best practices as well as giveaways and incentives that we have for boaters and marinas um, to help with that. All right. So next, um, we chose, uh, we actually partnered with ODNR to develop a great overview video of our Ohio Clean Marinas program. So I'm going to actually switch my screen here and that video I already have up. And I wanted to share that with you all because it's a great overview of our history and kind of where we've been in Ohio. 
So I'm going to see if I can get this to work here. The Ohio Clean Marinas program was launched in 2004 with grant funding provided by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and administered through the Ohio Department of Natural Resources Office of Coastal Management and the Ohio Sea Grant College program. My internet didn't work for you guys. Sorry, I think I had this already loaded, but I think my internet's still going slow. <laughs> See if I can get this to work here. All right. I think my home internet is not playing along well with me. What I'll do is I'm going to switch back over to my PowerPoint here because we've got it all covered in the PowerPoint. Paula, if you don't mind, I'm going to have you put that link in the chat box window in case anybody wants to view that at a later time. And I'm going to switch back to the PowerPoint. Thanks. All right. So basically our program, again, as, as um, the video started to mention, was started in 2004. It actually historically was limited to Lake Erie watershed marinas. And um, when I started in 2011, I, I was, um, it was hard because I had marinas inland who actually wanted to become a certified clean marina. And just because of our funding setup and limitations, uh, we were only able to work with marinas in the Lake Erie watershed. Um, so we're very pleased um, to, to say that in 2015, we partnered with the ODNR Division of Parks and Watercraft to expand to a statewide program. Um, we're one of the few statewide programs in the Great Lakes. Um, and uh, we feel that it's important because um, we are funded by a combination of federal and state dollars. So our state dollars come from the waterway safety fund, so boating tax dollars uh, for parks and watercraft. I receive funding from Ohio Sea Grant as well as um, the OSU Extension uh, program and uh, the federal uh, NOAA program through the ODNR Office of Coastal Management. And so we're truly a combination of federal and state dollars. And uh, regardless of whether we're working on the Lake Erie watershed or the Ohio River watershed, we're impacting huge, um, you know, water systems, whether we're talking about the Great Lakes and then in terms of the Ohio River watershed, ultimately, um, the practices that are happening in Southern Ohio, the Ohio River watershed and on downward uh, end up in, uh, impacting the Gulf of Mexico. And so we even have support from NOAA and the federal government for working statewide because we are ultimately impacting either the Great Lakes or the Gulf of Mexico um, through our efforts across Ohio. Um, so we've received very strong support um, on both a, a regional, uh, state, um, Great Lakes, and a national level, um, in large thanks to our partners, um, our support of Sea Grant and ODNR. And then as well, I want to mention the Lake Erie Marine Trades Association. Um, so we are purposely set up uh, with an advisory board that guides our program, and that board is comprised of representatives from uh, several state agencies, from uh, Sea Grant, which represents kind of our university partner and linking to the science, and then as well as industry representatives, both individual marina owners and uh, partners from the Lake Erie Marine Trades Association. So we strive to have a balance between uh, the environmental goals uh, that are, you know, founded in, in um, the whole mission of our program, but as well as balancing the economy and wanting to make sure we are supporting our marinas uh, as small businesses, as local businesses in Ohio. And we accomplish all of this truly through education because again, we are non-regulatory. Um, so everything we do is steeped in um, education. Our, our environmental best practices are science-based. And then we uh, work with our marinas to adopt best practices, not through regulation, but through education and technical assistance. Um, so that is really how we um, kind of conduct this program across Ohio. Um, I will say just for folks who are just starting to become familiar with this program, um, we're not alone. There are clean marina programs all across the country. Um, so there is a Texas clean marina program, there's a Florida clean marina program, there's a Maryland, uh, New York, well, New York has a clean marina initiative. Um, 
California. It's, it's all across the country. So um, when you become a clean marina, yes, we promote you in Ohio, but know that um, we actually, our team actively engages with other clean marina programs across the country to learn from, share ideas, share challenges, um, and so that we're not working a bubble. Um, if we have marinas that, for example, are having an issue with invasive species in Ohio, we can then take that question and feed it out to the larger clean marina network and you know pool resources and so we're not reinventing the wheel we can learn from other states and what other marinas have done to address some of these challenges that you may have so and then the last piece here is we currently have about 83 certified ohio clean marinas and we'll learn more about our tiered program later but um, of those 13 are gold certified what we call gold certified and then we have two platinum certified which is the highest level all right the last and final thing i already mentioned that we have a national um, number of certified clean marinas but i did want to switch over for a moment just because i think this is a phenomenal resource that many of you may be interested in there is a um, website and a network called the Great Lakes Clean Marina Network. So I'm gonna take this moment to, to bounce over to uh, a website here. Let's see if I can get to my browser. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Paul and Heather, nod your head if you can see the Great Lakes Clean Marina Network browser there. Perfect, okay. So this is, I believe Paul may be putting this in the chat box window, um, but there's a website, it's essentially glcleanmarina.org. And um, there are a number of our Ohio Clean Marina program resources on here, but there's a, a this is basically a, a clearinghouse for a number of clean marina programs in the Great Lakes. And I just recommend you to check it out if you are running a marina or interested in boating or anything related to recreational boating, it's a great resource. Um, there's some highlighted resources here. There's actually a best practices guide. If for whatever reason, let's say, and if anybody ever watches this, this webinar, um, if you don't have a clean marina certification program in your state, this guide is actually meant to be a guidebook to help you get started with a clean marinas program. Or if you're a marina that, you know, maybe you don't want to go through the full certification process, it still is a phenomenal resource. It's actually a guidebook that covers recommended environmental best practices that all of our clean marina programs actually adopt in the Great Lakes. And then some of the reasoning behind those practices. Um, so it's a really great resource. There's an online clean marina classroom that's available through Michigan. Uh, right now, I believe a lot of their marinas are go through an online classroom for training. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up. There are archived educational webinars. These are, again, if you're a marine owner operator or if you work with marine owners and want to learn about topic specific information for marinas, this is a huge um, a kind of a database of information. We have past presentations on everything from um, kind of general overview to we have um, boat wash water management. Um, this is an older one, but I'll tell you a lot of this information is still relevant for marinas today. We have aquatic invasive species information. We have stormwater management, and then we even have one on increasing resiliency for marinas and harbors. So that goes into some of the coastal resiliency with coastal storms and hazards. Um, so those are great, you know, unfortunately in what's happening currently, if you have some downtime and uh, you wanna uh, brush up on some of these topics, I recommend looking into these. And then also I'm gonna go to this resources page, this publications and resources drop down. Um, I won't go through all of these, but again, it's, it's a great place to come and just kind of browse through and see what else is here. There's case studies from marinas that are, um, have, have been a clean marina. This I'm gonna bring up here, and then Paul, I believe, may have um, a link to this in the chat box window. We've worked with vendors uh, across the country, really, to offer uh, Great Lakes clean marina discounts. And basically what that means is if you are a certified clean marina, you can um, get a discount uh, for being a clean marina um, on certain products. So this is something I recommend checking out when you get a chance. Um, it's a number of different products and vendors that um, we're not endorsing, but it's just simply we kind of compiled this list that they offer a discount for certified clean marinas on certain products that they have. I'm gonna go back one second here. And the only last thing I'm going to highlight here is going to be a fact sheet. Um, it's actually a compilation of clean voter, what are called tip sheets. 
Um, they're really great um, RA PDF files that you can download or um, you're welcome to ask us. We do have a small supply of tip sheets available that we may be able to get to you. And again, I won't open all of these, but I'll open one of them just for an example here. Um, these are statewide. I'm gonna open the rack cards. These are really great ones. They, they actually branded them so that any marine on the Great Lakes, it's not a state specific uh, fact sheet. Um, but like this one, for example, is a good one. It's called Be a Good Boating Steward. And it goes over, these are meant for boaters. Uh, they're great little rack cards to have in your office or if you wanna include it in a folder, if you provide it when you're um, doing slip renewal or, or dock renewal for the season. Um, this just gives a couple quick best practices, but the idea is you're, at, you're providing education in an easy to understand way um, for boaters that hopefully are quick tips that they can do that actually may, if every boater did it, um, makes an incredible impact on environmental water quality and air quality. Um, so I'll switch back there, but that's just a quick look. There are state programs. If for example, you hear word about maybe there's something cool that Chicago is doing in downtown, you can reach out to their state program coordinator. And, and we all interact very frequently. So don't feel afraid to just say, hey, you know, I heard about your program. I'm interested in learning more. All the coordinators information is here. And so you can reach out to them, ask questions, you know, maybe share ideas and lessons learned or challenges that you may be having. So. All right, I'm gonna switch back over to the PowerPoint here. Okay. All right, so with that, I'm going to mute myself and switch over to Heather, who's gonna be covering our benefits of becoming a clean marina. All right, hi everyone. Um, like Sarah said, next up we will discuss the benefits. Um, this slide right here is just a snapshot of some of the advantages to becoming part of our program. Uh, next slide. All right, first up um, is public recognition, an enhanced image and a great marketing tool. Um, as we all know, being green is a very popular um, marketing tool today. So as a clean marina, um, once you're awarded an official certification, we will provide you with an entire media kit. Um, usually that includes a template um, that you can fill in your marina's details or, or we can help you. Um, and you can send directly to your local newspaper or any other um, you know, social media, things like that to announce your certification and kind of explain it to your local, um, local boaters. We also um, love working with marinas even once you are certified. If uh, you want to do other articles throughout the year to highlight great things you're doing at your marina or within um, your community, we would love to get that out there. You know, the more free marketing you can do, the, the best. Um, our Ohio Clean Marinas are also added to the Great Lakes Clean Marina Network map. Uh, you see an example there, and that was the website Sarah was on um, just a minute ago. So if there are boaters that hop lake to lake within the Great Lakes system, um, you know, if they are used to seeking out a clean marina, this uh, kind of puts you on the map. Um, upon certification, marinas are also given a plaque. Um, we award these plaques at our annual clean, or our annual marina conference. Um, and also we give you other promotional signage. You see an example there um, in the left-hand corner just to advertise and you know give recognition that you've gone above and beyond to get this certification. Um, we also have a YouTube channel which we'll go into a little bit later and a Facebook page which um, Paul has really taken the lead on expanding that. Um, we post daily and then we also are you know friends uh, with other DNR Facebook pages, as well as other boating related pages. So, you know, it, it extends your message. 
Um, we also on Monday do a Marina Monday where we share our certified clean marinas and um, oftentimes we will highlight certain cool things that you're doing or even if you have neat events that you want to advertise, we can uh, share that on our Facebook page. Uh, next slide. Um, next up is compliance assistance um, and other education and training. This is actually the most, the most popular advantage with our marinas. Um, you know, oftentimes our marinas are small business owners and that is their, you know, specialty. But we, as, um, you know, nerdy naturalist types, we know a lot about the, the green side of, um, marinas and what they can do to better their environment. So uh, we provide webinars on different topics. Um, a couple examples are using alternative cleaning products, specifically on your boat, uh, but you know you can take those home with you and use them um, just on home cleaning, car cleaning, anything. Um, also some programs on using native plants um, and maybe even invasive um, plant removal or, or uh, ways to deal with inv invasive plants. Um, and during these webinars, we invite specialists in the field so that they can present these ideas and also assist marina, marinas with their questions or, you know, tips and lessons learned. Um, also, the Office of Coastal Management helps us to create customized maps for our clean marinas, um, which is great to have on file. Um, and these are great to have just if um, you have a SWIP or an NPDES permit, but just in general to show um, others what you're doing at your marina. We hold in-person workshops and technical assistance. Um, if you go back a slide, Sarah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there, um, with the technical assistance and workshops, there are two pictures um, with just an example. We did a series of five workshops. Um, we held them statewide, sort of in each district of Ohio. Um, and we trained marina owners and managers on, on stormwater and wastewater management um, and uh, green infrastructure and ways to deal with that stormwater. Okay, next slide. Thanks. Um, there are also financial incentives, which everyone gets excited about because everyone wants to know, you know, show me the money sort of <laughs> aspect. Um, we offer several physical incentives, such as educational signage. You see there um, a couple examples in the left-hand corner. Um, we have several different educational signage. Um, you all see, also see the uh, Stop Aquatic Hitchhikers, and we want to branch out to have um, signage about pollinator plots to educate boaters why um, some of your your gardens might look mismanaged but really it's you know supporting our pollinators um, we have we provide each marina with a, a clean marina burgee you see there the flag and we have other uh, various incentive items like a flossum scoop that metal scoop for you know fish kills or trash um, oil boom, fuel bibs, cigarette disposal containers, or other items we might have available in our warehouse, either because we've gotten a grant or, um, you know, we see that our marinas are asking for a certain item. We also, you can see the welcome kit there on the right-hand side. That does have each of our educational signage um, examples. And like I said, we've expanded that a bit. Um, and a couple other other uh, tip sheets like Sarah was showing you examples of that we can provide your front desk so that when your boaters, you know, come in um, either to hand in their dock agreement or whatnot or purchase something, they will see those tip sheets. 
Um, okay, next slide. Also, um, kind of going along with the financial incentives, um, we have reduced liabilities. Um, so clean marinas are often awarded reduced insurance rates. Um, you know, the insurance companies know that the marina is in compliance um, with all permitting and also that the marina has gone above and beyond at providing a clean and safe environment, not only for their boaters, but also for their staff. Um, clean marinas have improved relationships with, with regulatory agencies who are familiar with our program. Um, so we work all the time with uh, Ohio EPA, but also health departments and things like that. Um, and they know that with the certification, the marina is up to date on all regulations. It's also an advantage, let's say, for instance, you do have a question, um, you know, let's, you know, say you're doing power washing and you want to know if you are required to have a certain permit. It might be scary to call up the EPA on your own. However, if you give us a call, one of our staff, we are more than willing to um, contact the EPA for you. You know, obviously not giving any names or anything, but we are able to seek out that information um, on behalf of your marina. So also your marina, obviously for yourself, your family, your staff will be safer, healthier, and um, you know, a better place to work. So next slide. There you go. Um, another advantage to being, oop, can you go one back? Uh-oh. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Sarah. Um, uh, one other advantage to being part of the program is our Ohio Clean Boater Program, as well as training that we can provide to your boaters and uh, your marina staff. We have marina and boater educational resources you can find on our website, which is listed there uh, first. And Ohio Department of Natural Resources also links you to many of the same um, marina and boater resources. Like Sarah already kind of you, gave you a, a walkthrough of the Great Lakes Clean Marina Network website. They also have tons of pub publications and resources um, to train both yourself, um, your staff, and your boaters. Our social media schedule, um, Paul has done a wonderful job at expanding um, and he and our staff shares daily tips and educational articles relating to the boating industry. Um, we also worked with Josiah Wade at uh, Office of Communications at DNR to provide a handful of um, YouTube videos to use for training your staff or yourself or your boaters on topics like fueling or um, you know recycling shrink wrap. So there is the link there to check those out. Um, we would also love to come out to your uh, marina to train either your staff or your boaters. Perhaps you have you know, an opening day, um, you know, a dock party or some other big event, maybe it's a, a fishing tournament. And um, one of the three of us uh, could be available to come out. And we have, of course, our clean boater tip sheets and we have um, pledges as well as little freebies that your clean boaters, while they're getting education, they get something for free. So, you know, Everyone loves some free items. So um, you, we can also, we've started to do a train the trainer sort of program because it's only the three of us. So sometimes, especially on those busy weekends, we can't be everywhere. So if you are interested in having your staff or even local educational staff or our naturalists, 
um, trained, we can do that training so that we can reach more boaters um, throughout the state, either just adding it to your safety um, lesson before you head out on a paddle trip or something like that. And we can provide those uh, freebies as well. Um, another resource, if you um, contact us, we can give you a binder of information to give your boaters, um, as well as some of those incentive items. I know I've worked with several naturalists and given them stickers and um, waterproof neck totes, anything that we have on hand, um, you know, that our budget allows, we can give those so you can not only do the educational piece, but give something to your boater. Um, there you can see that you can take the Clean Boater Pledge, which I encourage all of you to do as well, um, but you can, if you don't have um, the binder yet, or you know you have a program before we can get you the items, you can always take them to take that pledge there, and it's a PDF that you can um, print out. Um, we have some other ways that we are working with um, uh, primarily Cindy Koss with DNR uh, to expand our clean butter um, education program in the operation guide as well as the OBEC um, training resources so we can kind of ex expand that program. So next slide. And last but not least, the warm and fuzzy one that we all um, love is improved water quality and wildlife habitat. So becoming a um, clean marina allows you to demonstrate to everyone in your community that you are protecting the waterways and also protecting your livelihood as a marina owner. So you need clean water um, to have a great business because you know if it's icky water, your boaters may not come to your reservoir or um, lake or river. So also, like Sarah already mentioned, um, we kind of see the marina as a gateway to the water. Um, you're the last stop before that water enters the, the you know, reservoir or lake or river. Um, so not only are you, you know, filtering out things to decrease your marina's impact on the water or your boaters, but also like Sarah mentioned, you know, the local roadways or anything going on on um, the land in your watershed, you are actually helping to filter out before it goes into the water. Great, next slide. Thank you, Heather. Thanks. Awesome. Okay, I'm just double checking the chat box window because there was one question. I'm just going to address it in case folks aren't able to see the chat box window um, that was asked um, about the the white like coils in the in the dock box and just to be sure. So the um, with the incentive items, uh, I'm going to actually go back here if it's going to let me. Let me see how how fast this goes. Um, and the welcome kit there were, um, Heather referred it to, to it as oil boom. Um, mm -hmm. It's basically uh, right here, and I'll see if I can highlight it right with my cursor. Um, so this is a dock box. Uh, most marinas, if they have a fuel dock, they are required to have um, oil boom on hand. Um, it's honestly a good practice regardless um, in case there is a spill. Um, but what we do is, because our program is you know, founded in environmental best practices, uh, we offer, certified clean marinas uh, about 40 feet of boom um, when they get certified. Uh, so that way if a marina doesn't have boom, they have at least something there that's on hand, even if they don't have a fuel dock. Um, you never know if something's going to happen. Um, you don't have to have a fuel dock to have somebody have a, um, you know, a line break and have some oil uh, in leaking or even maybe somebody dumped something down the storm drain and that ends up in your marina. Um, so that's something we try and provide to you um, as, as part of the program. And I would just even add, Sarah, for those yeah. marinas who think they don't even have power boats, um, it's still it's still excellent to have some sort of boom um, because we've had trucks, you know, vehicles that have swamped and they have used the boom. So even in those smaller marina situations, it's a great resource. 
That's a great point, Heather. Yeah. I think all of us, and then it'll keep going, but the stories that we've heard about <laughs> since taking this position is, um, yeah, there's always something. It's There's some crazy scenarios that end up happening. And so from our standpoint, it's always better to be prepared. So we try and help you in any way that we can with that. Awesome. Okay, I'm just going to answer. I think that's everything. And folks, again, just if you're, if you're able to, what we're doing is entering some of the links. Um, we will have them embedded in the PowerPoint that we will share with everyone. Um, uh, once we um, close out the webinar, we'll share the recording uh, through an email, and then we'll share the PowerPoint slides. Um, but we are sharing links in the chat box window if you do have anything that you really you know, piques your interest and you want to go ahead and, and bring that up in your browser and bookmark it for later. All right, so next we're gonna, um, because this is a pared down version of what is normally our in-person certification webinar, or excuse me, certification workshop, um, we're gonna go through the certification process and then I'm gonna cover our checklist, but I'm not gonna go into full detail. I'm just gonna try and give you a snapshot. And um, as I'll explain here in a minute, um, we'll, we'll talk why. So on the screen here, is our what we kind of call our, our five, six, six step um, certification process for becoming an Ohio Clean Arena. So by participating in this training workshop today, um, this is actually step one. Again, I, as I mentioned, traditionally this is an in-person workshop, which we do value um, and uh, really want to uh, continue to conduct moving forward just because in that interactive environment of being in person, we're able to really um, gauge the marinas that are in the room, the needs of those marinas, and really have some follow-up conversations that same day on specific practices that apply to those marinas. Um, so in this current situation uh, with COVID-19, what we're doing is we're adapting the certification program what we're calling this is this is step one of a two-step training process. Um, so if you uh, attended today's webinar or if at any point you do attend this webinar recording, we will count this as step one of a, of, or I guess you could say a of a, of a kind of a two process training training workshop. So um, what we'll do is if you are interested in becoming a certified clean marina, or let's say you've been certified, but you're interested in becoming a higher tier, what we do ask is that you fill out our clean marina pledge, um, which Paul will be putting in the chat box window shortly. Um, that's an online pledge form. Basically that gives us permission to go ahead and follow up with you uh, about, you know, um, becoming a certified clean marina. And what we will do is in this instance, we will probably set up a, another virtual uh, meeting similar to this, but more one-on-one. -on -one. And that is where we will spend a little bit more time uh, with you going through the certification checklist, going through all the environmental best practices that apply to the clean marinas program. And together, this webinar combined with that, um, I guess you could say online, you know, virtual meeting together that will count as that step one training. Um, so again, if, if you're seeing this moving forward, uh, hopefully it falls well in, you know, fall or spring of next year, we're able to provide in-person workshops again. That one workshop will count as that step one. So the next step is pledging. So once a marina ob obtains the training, uh, that's the educational requirement for becoming certified, they fill out the pledge form. Again, Paul put in the chat box window. That just, um, you know, we, we try and market the program, but we also don't want to, you know, we don't want to hound people. Um, so what that allows us to do is say, okay, you know, you're a marina that's interested, you want to learn more, it is not in any way a commitment. Um, it's just simply a piece of paper that, that basically tells us, hey, yeah, we can you know, get your contact information and follow up with you. Um, so once we receive that pledge, we'll then reach out uh, with you to set up what's called a preliminary site visit. And basically that's where we come out on site to walk around your marina and we go through the entire checklist in detail based on what's specifically at your site. Again, in current conditions with everything that's going on, um, at least for the foreseeable next couple of months, if you do move, want to move forward as a certified clean marina, what we will ask is reach out to us or fill out the pledge. And what we will probably do, do is a virtual site visit um, to the best that we can, trying to uh, assess your property. And then um, we will probably have to do the full you know, certification uh, in person after um, any travel restrictions or in-person meeting restrictions have been lifted. 
So after that step three, after that preliminary site visit or the virtual <laughs> preliminary site visit, we will submit to you, uh, really it's kind of a letter that outlines recommendations. Uh, what's nice is we, we basically take the checklist that we complete with you on site and we pare down that checklist to say, all right, you know, because again, most marinas, you guys are accomplishing already a lot of what's on our checklist. So we go through that checklist and say, okay, good, you're good here. And then we'll just pare down, all right, if you want to become a certified clean marina, here's a few things, you know, the few best practices that you need to adjust or implement to get certified. So we'll send you that streamlined letter. And then the ball is in your court. Um, it's up to you to go through the process of implementing those recommendations or adjusting certain things on site. And basically, once you do that, uh, you re reach back out to us and say, you know, hey, I think I'm ready for my final certification. And that is step five, where um, we will actually come out on site. That does 100% have to be an on site visit. Um, we have a secondary verifier on site just because we try and maintain consistency amongst all our certified marinas. Um, and oftentimes marinas are, are, you know, so good and they've, they've done everything um, that we certify that day usually because um, we'll, you know, double check that everything is ready to go. And so that day we'll often bring our real estate signs, all the great marketing materials, any of our giveaways, things like that. We'll bring that with us um, to that site visit. So this process, and I'll mention step six in a minute, but the steps one through five, uh, I've seen it take a marina as short as a month or two to go through that process. And some marinas, it'll take honestly a year. Um, it's, it, we're, we try and be flexible. We understand that especially now there's challenging circumstances and marinas alone are, you know, again, often small businesses trying to deal with lots of things. Um, so we try and, you know, work around your schedule. Um, if you're, you know, really on board and let's say your marina is already meeting a lot of these practices, you could attend this webinar. We could set up a virtual site visit and get you all ready to go. You could implement recommendations in the next couple of months. And as soon as we're able to come out on site, we could get you certified. Um, if let's say the summer just, you know, gets crazy and, you know, you get bogged down with, as happens, other things, um, by all means, we can wait until the fall. We actually do certifications in the middle of winter. That's okay. Sometimes that's the best time for the marinas to kind of walk around the marina and, and get certified. Um, so we work year round. We, we adjust around your schedule. We do ask that you get certified within about one year of the workshop, just because things change, our recommendations change. So if you're a marina that let's say you attended a workshop a couple years ago and you pledged, but you never became certified, we do ask that you attend a workshop again, just to freshen up on the best practices, maybe new education, things like that. So we do ask that. Uh, once a marina is certified, that certification is good for five years. So we will do what's called a desk audit, which is basically we send out a letter asking marinas to affirm every year that they're still completing the practices that they met when they became certified. And then every five years we come out for an in-person site visit. Uh, step six of our certification process, this is new as of 2018, is reaching a higher tier. Um, so what I'm going to move into next is our tiered certification program. And uh, basically, our, our program, our 10-year anniversary was in about 2015. And um, what we realized is, we, you know, we have a number of marinas across Ohio, you know, over 80 marinas that are participating in this program. Um, it can get boring if, if they're doing the same practices year in and year out. And, um, you know, maybe the marinas are, you know, they joined 10 years ago and it's like, okay, you know, you know what, what, what else can I do? So what we did is we worked together with our advisory board and a number of our partners and we redid our checklist. And um, again, I'm not going to go into detail on this, but just going to try and give you a snapshot of what we've done here. Uh, we redid this and built it out to be a tiered program. And the idea is all of our existing certified marinas are at what's called a base level tier. And so they're already grandfathered into the new program setup. And then what we did was try to set up a gold and a platinum tier so that either new marinas who are joining can certainly, you know, 
shoot for the stars and go for a gold or a platinum tier um, and right from the get-go or currently certified marinas who again maybe are you know they've been in the program and maybe they're looking for something new they're looking for you know new challenges or maybe their boaters are supportive of some new practices that weren't around in in 10 years ago i'll tell you right now we i wasn't talking a lot about marine debris when i started working for this program now marine debris is a huge topic the boaters are very interested in um so you know, maybe there's new best practices that your boaters would be supportive of you implementing. And not only would that be something you do for your boaters and your clientele, but it also helps you reach a higher tier and we can then market you and provide you additional benefits by being a gold or a platinum certified clean marina. So uh, that's what caused us to kind of restructure things. Uh, we used to have different chapters, but this is just a snapshot here. We've got one chapter on marina management another chapter on water management and resiliency. The third one is on ecological considerations. And then the last two are really, um, you know, might not be intuitively uh, environmentally based, but we see it as this is, this is still having an impact. And so those are boater education. And that's to my, to, in my mind, it's a trickle down effect. So it's not only is the marina implementing best practices, but what are you doing with your boaters to make sure your boaters are supporting you as a clean marina? And then your employees and the community. How are you making sure your staff are also following, you know, the good practices that you're doing to be a clean marina? And then how are you interacting with your community? So we'll go through these briefly. I'm going to point out a couple examples. And again, um, this is not going to be full in detail. I'm going to try and share, and I don't know if it's working. It's showing in my screen, but um, there, I have the ability supposedly to share files <laughs> and I'm going to try and do this here. I'm sending a tiered program checklist to everyone right now. It shows up as a PDF for me in the chat box window, but I may not get to you all. Um, regardless, uh, we'll have that checklist available to you all. We'll send that up in the follow up um, with the recording, the PowerPoint. So the marina management chapter, just a few things we'll call out. Um, Marine debris is, is actually a big part of this section, but the way we approach this is it's, okay, how is, how is a marina owner, operator, staff member, you know, how do you manage um, certain things on site, like how you, um, your waste management and things like that. So do you have uh, fishing line recycling bins if you allow fishing at your marina? Um, do you have uh, supplies for either um, oil spills or, uh, best practices such as fuel bibs on your fuel nozzles to catch the drops of gasoline. Um, if you have an above ground storage tank, do you have secondary containment? Um, are you hopefully training your staff and um, making sure that you're maintaining that secondary containment in case there is a spill? Um, are you, do you have recycling available? And at the very least, do you uh, manage your waste properly where you make sure dumpster lids, trash can lids are covered and closed. Um, do you try and contain it so you don't have trash cans rolling around? Um, things like that. So those are just a couple examples of the marina management section. All right, water management and resiliency. This covers everything from stormwater and a little bit into kind of coastal storms and just uh, making sure you're prepared. Um, again, we know it's, you guys are doing a million things and um, what what we see our job is we're there to be a resource for you and hopefully remind you so you know you your job is to run the facility and and keep up with that and so hopefully through our program through emails or staying in touch with us or maybe our newsletter every once in a while you get a reminder oh man you know have I cleaned my storm drains or um, you know, maybe in the, in the winter time, I should sit down and make sure that my staff, we have an emergency preparedness plan in case we have, hopefully never, but in case we have another Superstorm Sandy. Uh, do our boaters know how to properly tie down their vessels, you know, if we have major water level fluctuations? Um, so it's our role to help kind of remind you every once in a while and ping you and say, hey, you know, have you, have you done this? And so hopefully that takes some stress off of you, knowing that that's our job is to stay on top of these resources and on top of this information and then provide that to you and provide the technical assistance to you to help with that. 
A great point, Kathleen. <laughs> Not if, but when on superstorms. You're absolutely right. We're we're seeing that's that's some of the um, this change in this tiered checklist. Honestly, again, is is a lot of it is science based, and so we've seen a need for increased resiliency and a need for increased stormwater management and wastewater management at marinas. So we're just trying to respond to that change, and again, hopefully, give you some resources to help you, um, so that this isn't all on your plate. Um, so I already mentioned the storm drains. Um, this is a this is actually a marina. They had a like a little kayak or like a little snack shack, and so they just did a downspout disconnection with a nice little rain barrel. The boaters love it because it's a cool little demonstration project. It's also a great teaching tool for boaters to learn about what they can do at home to help manage stormwater on site. And you know, it the marina um, is able to gather some rainwater to use for watering the local plants in the garden that's right next to this. Uh, we have stormwater. We're actually trying to keep up on green infrastructure best practices and where the marine industry is going there. Um, so it's there's some great um, teaching tools and case studies that we're developing that we're happy to share with others around that. And then I do want to especially mention this is more on the regulatory side of things, but it's a key technical assistance um, I guess educational um, assistance that we provide. If you are a marina that's required to have a stormwater um, permit, let's say you're an industrial marina, uh, we provide an incredible amount of technical assistance, both helping you get that stormwater permit and then helping you um, maintain it through training and, and um, the various requirements of uh, water quality monitoring and documentation. So this picture right here on the bottom is an example of a map that we work with the Coastal Management Office and their assistance to help develop plans for marinas on how to manage their stormwater. This map is a required component of a stormwater pollution prevention plan that must be developed prior to having a stormwater permit and getting your stormwater permit. So um, normally, you know, this could involve a lot of effort and time on your part. We try and help you with this and then also help explain all the reasonings behind this so that your job is not to becoming an expert in this. You know, your job is to run your facility. Our job is to be an expert on these topics so that we can help you and make it as easy as possible for you to keep doing your job. Ecological considerations. This bridges over a little bit from stormwater, but definitely goes into wildlife enhancement and protecting our local ecosystem. Again, keeping in mind, yes, you are an industry, but you are an industry on the water. And so we seek to have a balance. We want you to have a strong business, but we also want to have, um, you know, a balanced impact on our local e ecology. So some examples here of just what we've documented in marinas. Um, we have some marinas that have put up birdhouses, you know, as an opportunity to have wildlife enhancement. Um, floating wetlands. There are um, great opportunities if you have the space um, for native grasses or what we're calling living shoreline along the shoreline instead of, um, you know, it's all dependent on your wave energy and wind energy and your local environment. But if, if it allows for it, um, you know, minimizing the man-made um, kind of hardened structure and looking towards um, more innovative practices along the shoreline, again, that still function well for your instance, um, for you know protecting erosion control and things like that, but that also have additional wildlife benefits. And even, um, this goes back into the resiliency piece. A lot of these practices not only enhance wildlife um, and benefit wildlife, but they actually help you um, become more resilient in uh, coastal storm situations and flooding situations. Um, one final thing I'll mention, and this is a simple one that we actually work, if, if you were to work with a local um, troop or a local you know, community group to do a little butterfly garden, pollinator garden, it's very simple. We can actually partner with some of the um, great partners we have, get you some seeds, um, and it's a, it's a great way to um, add an aesthetically pleasing area to your marina, but then also benefit local wildlife. All right, the last two, boater education. Again, this is this trickle-down effect. Um, some examples here are if you put up signage, if you have a boat ramp on invasive species for boaters, uh, what we're trying to do is make sure boaters, if they are transient boaters, that they are actually um, what we call clean, drain, dry, 
They're adopting best practices to minimize the spread of invasive species when going from body of water to body of water. Uh, if you offer vessel safety checks, uh, we've been starting to partner a lot more with the uh, U.S. Power Squadron and Coast Guard Auxiliary on uh, incorporating environmental education into their vessel safety checks. So not only are, especially new boaters, um, getting good education on you know, how to properly run their vessel and, and be a safe boating steward, but they're also getting education on how to be a clean boating steward. So making sure you know, they're, they're fueling in the right area on their boat and they're not um, you know, the fueling in the fuel tank and not in the bilge, and, which we've heard stories about. Um, and that they not only have flares on hand and life jackets, but they also maybe have um, some gloves and a garbage bag on hand in case there's trash. You know, th just trying to think outside the box, not just accomplishing safe boating, but together accomplishing clean and safe boating. Um, if you recognize your boaters, I'll just say if we, um, if you have a Facebook page or like a local newsletter with your boaters, that's a great example. You could call somebody out maybe once during the season that, that goes above and beyond um, in regards to clean boating. Let's say they, they walk around the marina and they help clean up or um, they agree to start a native plant garden. Um, there's lots of great opportunities and that way you support your boaters and hopefully um, encourage other boaters to do the same. And finally, employee training and community outreach. So this is the first piece of this chapter is involving supporting your staff in attending things like this webinar that would count for training for your staff, but then also encouraging them to participate in webinars or other environmentally related um, trainings so that the marina management team is not the only one that understands and knows about the clean marina program. Um, what we'd like to see is a culture adopted across the marina um, on the clean marinas program so that even if the marina manager isn't there, we can trust that their staff are, um, you know, making sure the storm drains are cleaned, um, making sure that they're monitoring boaters that are fueling up at the fuel dock, uh, things like that. And then for the community side, uh, there's a number of great examples that we count towards certification. Let's say you partner on a waterfront beach cleanup um, with a community group. Um, you do a local outreach event. Um, this is one we can actually help you with. We could come out and let's say you have an open house or a big day when you have lots of boaters at your facility. We could set up a table and like Heather was mentioning, we could have our clean boater program and um, you know, talk to your boaters about um, why they should uh, be a clean boater on the water. Um, so there's lots of opportunities that we recognize for people doing the right thing. So with that, that's a quick overview of our checklist. Again, it, there's a lot more details there, but hopefully that gives you an idea as to, um, you know, what, what's covered in our current tiered checklist. And then I'm gonna switch over to Heather, who's gonna cover some of the other projects. Um, I'll say <laughs> the majority of what we do is our site visits, you know, promoting our clean marinas and then interacting with our certified clean marinas, whether it's, you know, trying to um, continually provide technical assistance or um, for pledged marinas, try and get them certified. Um, but we do a number of other things. So hopefully those of you on the call will learn some more about what we do and um, how we're happy to partner together. So I'll mute All myself right. and let Heather take over. Thanks, Sarah. Um, so yeah, I'll try to quickly go through some of our larger projects, um, both projects we have going on right now, but also our annual sort of uh, larger projects. So you'll see, um, first off is the Aquatic Invasive Species Blitz. Um, it takes place June 28th through July 5th. And this is a project that um, not only do several states across the Great Lakes um, participate in, but also Canada. So um, Ohio started participating last year and we would really like to expand those programs, um, especially because I believe a lot of um, our naturalists and other educators are, you know, talking about aquatic invasive species. So if you could get with one of our staff or go to the website you see there. Um, we would really like to give you credit for doing these um, trainings. So even if you have a paddling, uh, you know, program that weekend or that couple weeks um, 
and you just add aquatic invasive species education to your safety um, spiel before you head out on the water, that would definitely count. Um, and honestly, I, I know you naturalists probably talk about aquatic invasive species even when you're out on the water. So definitely let us know, um, and we're working with wildlife on those AIS Blitz uh, programs as well as OSUC grant. Um, we have a green infrastructure project going on, which I have a, another slide to uh, go a little more in depth about. Um, so that is a, a grant project that started January 2019 and we hope um, will end uh, or finish up December 2022. Um, there will be green infrastructure projects that will go um, at three of our marinas in the Great Lakes. So Ohio has a project in which um, I believe a handful of the green infrastructure will go in at one of our marinas. And then Michigan and Wisconsin is also involved. Um, and OSU has a monitoring team that will be monitoring water quality during these uh, projects so that we can really show marinas as well as the public what green infrastructure actually does for our water quality. Um, and outreach and an amazing website um, will be completed by Sea Grant in each of the, um, the different states and our Clean Marinas team. So look forward to um, seeing that. So Sarah, if you can go back to the original slide. Thanks. Um, so we also have a virtual reality interactive Ideal Clean Marina as part of that project. Um, and I will go into that in just a second. Um, there we go. So our um, Ohio Clean Marinas team had um, Hull and Associates do this uh, map for us. It's the Ideal Clean Marina map, and it actually goes along with our tiered program there on the right hand side. Um, but this map is not actually of an Ohio marina, but this is basically if, you know, money was not, um, you know, a concern, if you had a million dollars, you could build this out and it includes everything from wind power, solar power, wetlands, etc. So this is pretty much a picture of the perfect marina. Um, if we go to the next slide, along with the um, project, the Green Infrastructure Project, Ohio is building out a virtual reality visualization of this ideal clean marina. Um, and we're working with Smith Group, and they are essentially helping us make that map a virtual reality thing where you can actually walk through a marina and marina owners can see what their marina might look like if they install a bioswale or a rain garden or something. Because sometimes there's a little bit of a concern that their boaters might not like it. it maybe it looks wild or something. Um, so this gives them um, a good picture of what it could look like. If I could share my screen, I can show you very, very quickly. Um, let me try. This is what it could look like. Can you see it, Sarah and Paul? Yes. Okay. So um, if we just walk around, so Smith Group is actually going to provide us with some virtual reality goggles. Um, so you can walk through a marina and do things like this, where you go down to a dock entrance. Um, and sort of walk around and view what it might look like. And of course, those hot spots can give you several educational, like it says, yes, we have fish tacos, obviously we won't be doing that, but um, yeah. So I will stop sharing, Sarah, if you wanna share again. I just wanted to show everyone that quickly. So um, that, We'll first, if we can go to the next slide, 
um, start with a green infrastructure because that's part of the large, larger project. So we'll talk about downspout disconnection and the various ways you can do that, um, native vegetation, pervious pavement, um, everything like that, even down to green roofs. And Josiah from um, ODNR Communications has already worked with us to do those awesome shots you see there. Those are actual Ohio marinas, and he was able to do 360 and drone footage with us so that, um, you know, you can actually see this implemented in our Ohio marinas. If we go to the next slide, our phase basically three is once we, um, you know, have the funding and stuff to do additional hotspots that will be able um, to allow us to enhance the, the uh, map and the virtual reality to go into, you know, pump out stations, fish cleaning, life jacket loaners um, stations, recycling bins, things like that that aren't necessarily green infrastructure, but great best management practices at our marinas. If we can go back a couple slides, sorry. Back to the summary. I'm getting there, Heather. Sorry, I'm trying. <laughs> no, sorry, guys. No, you're fine. Let me jump around. Can you see that slide now? Heather? Yes. Yep. Thank you. Um, so like we've already talked about, our other big project is the clean boater training. And like I said, we've tried, we're trying to work into putting that in the um, ODNR operations guide and the OBEC training, things like that. And please, please let us know if you are interested in the train the trainer, if you're a naturalist or another educator statewide that you want training to, um, you know, extend that training to boaters. Um, marine, if we'll just stay on this slide for a second. Um, marine debris, shrink wrap and monofilament recycling projects we do have. Um, which I'll go into a slide in a second. Um, we also annually have a, an Ohio Marina Conference, um, and that conference is open to everyone. It usually takes place in February um, and, you know, gives updates. There's a picture there on the left-hand corner, um, as well as workshops and other online trainings that's we, that we have already discussed. Um, and also, there's a picture there of our Ohio Clean Marina's program calendar. Um, we did not uh, complete it this year, but we would love to have people send us pictures that we can maybe do a uh, 2021 calendar. And the calendar is awesome, not only because it highlights our clean marinas, but it also gives tips um, each month to our marina managers and boaters. Um, and it also gives you reminders if you do have a permit that you need to do like water quality testing or something like that, we give you a little heads up to do that. So if we can go forward a couple slides to marine debris, I think that's my last, last little bit and then we can try to hurry through it for questions. <laughs> okay. okay. So yes, marine debris and recycling, we have several kind of projects going on. Um, we can help you with monofilament recycling. So that will help your marina, one, get the you know, fishing line off the shoreline, but also help you with your mowers and stuff not getting hung up in that fishing line recycling. And I believe um, uh, Old Woman Creek is doing a GPS location of each of these monofilament recycling bins. So if you do have them, please let us know and we can um, include those. We can send them to the person to include those on a map statewide to sort of have an inventory of the monofilament recycling bins um, for fishers out there. We also have um, a uh, uh, skip the straw campaign that was primarily focused on putting bay tourists and it went went exceptionally well. You have a couple pictures there of a cleanup that we did, um, but it was really inspiring to see the the bartenders and the uh, business owners there 
really take ownership of the program. Um, they spent the summer educating their visitors um, about, you know, why they're skipping the straw. And it's not just an ocean thing. And it is a Great Lakes um, thing. So it was really inspiring to see them take that one to their customers, but also probably home as well. Um, we currently have a US EPA trash free Great Lakes grant initiative that we've submitted funds for to put water or in water trash skimmers in the Ohio um, uh, Lake Erie watershed at our Ohio Clean Marinas. Um, we're also working on um, expanding our shrink wrap program just with recycling constraints and um, lower funding. Lately, we have tried to work with uh, certain marinas statewide that have kind of taken the lead on this project and were able to offer collection sites. Um, and we have, you know, sort of of case studies on what works and what doesn't but um, right now literal tons of shrink wrap recycling uh, or just shrink wrap boat shrink wrap is going into our landfill so we would really love to extend that program and try to get that uh, shrink wrap to recyclers that can recycle it we did an educational video with uh, Josiah Wade from DNR uh, communications to train our boaters and marina owners how to properly prepare the shrink wrap for recycling. Um, so you kind of see a little uh, clip of that, but we will provide that website. Um, and yeah, so if you, I just want to say if any of you, especially the educators out there have a site or an idea of how to expand these programs, that would be uh, much appreciated. So just let us know. Thank you, Heather. Okay, make sure everybody can still hear me. I'm going to continue here. Okay. All right. Okay. So we just have a couple more slides here and then we'll open up our Q&A session. Um, I want to say while I'm finishing up these last couple slides, if people have questions about anything at all, uh, feel free to start entering them in the chat box. I think just with the way I think we are on the call, I'm also going to likely open it up so that people can unmute themselves and we can just have discussion. But if you prefer, and just to have all of us be able to see it or, or others see your question, um, feel free to enter some of those in the chat box window while I'm speaking for the next few minutes. Okay, so last thing I want to cover, um, this is another one of our projects, um, but I, I wanted to talk about this just to try and get across the importance of it, and especially now. Um, so, the OSU Extension program, um, and the, really OSU Extension itself, um, they have a business retention expansion initiative that has been going on for literally decades. Um, historically, the idea behind this initiative is um, OSU Extension staff would work with a county uh, either economic development or a local um, community development group to, on a county by county or city by city basis, basically assess their local businesses for how they're doing as a business. Um, you know, are, are they preparing to close? Are they growing? Are they going to add another business in either the same county or maybe another county? Um, are their needs being met by the local community um, in terms of either workforce development and even as, as simple as like, do, are their roads being you know, maintained properly? Do they have a good response rate and from the local fire department when there's an emergency? Um, things like that. And so it was traditionally a program that was county-based and city-based. And so back in 2013-2014, I partnered with um, Joe Lucente, who is our um, community development specialist with Ohio Sea Grant, and he and I worked to adapt this program for Lake Erie Marinas. In 2014, we basically took this survey and instead of going county by county to, to all the businesses, we instead applied it to all coastal counties in the Lake Erie watershed, but only for marina businesses. So we actually were able to get together a pretty good snapshot on um, 
current marinas back in 2014 in the Lake Erie region and how they were doing as a business. And we added, because of our Clean Marina partnership, we added some questions related to Lake Erie and um, kind of the Clean Marinas program and how hopefully how we can help in any way to support um, them as a business. Um, but the goal behind this and moving forward is what we're hoping to do is actually develop a trend analysis so that we can conduct this survey every couple years and over time actually build out uh, a snapshot of the marina businesses in Ohio um, over time. And, and if that, um, those small businesses as an industry are growing, if they're starting to close, and hopefully provide essential economic impact information uh, for these small businesses to give to their local communities, to their decision makers and support them in, in receiving economic support and um, any other types of support, um, administrative support, um, you know, local community support um, in their county or city. So in 2014, we did a Lake Erie Marina only survey. And in 2019, we launched a statewide survey. And the key with the survey is we have to have, because of its tying to Ohio State and, and having science-based information, we have to have ideally a 20% response rate in order to be able to publish this data and make this data available for our marinas to be able to share with their decision makers. So what we are struggling with is we are um, not getting a good response rate, I'm just being honest. And so we need at least 70 marinas across the state of Ohio to fill out this survey in order for it to be um, publishable data and, and valid data. And, and we really are, you know, we want to get a good snapshot of the marina industry. Um, some key factors here, this is 100% anonymous. The whole point is all of this information is being compiled so that as a whole, we can see and really make some incredible statements. Um, for example, the old survey, we were able to say um, number of jobs retained and number of jobs expected to be added in the marina industry. And then using Ohio State's, they have connections with the um, with a software survey, and uh, excuse me, called Implan, and so they're able to actually extrapolate out that data and get valid numbers on, for example, the local economic impact of those jobs and the people that, that um, come to these marinas. And so they're really huge numbers that we're able to say um, in terms of the marina industry and, and its impact on the state of Ohio. Um, so if you are a marina yourself, if you have any ability either through social media or through any other channels to help share this survey with others, if you could please help us promote this survey, we've expanded it to be available through 2020. And so we really need to get some good response rates. Um, what we are doing now is because we, we honestly have very few, like under 10 survey responses. Um, I will say it's about a 10 minute survey. And the reason is, again, we're trying to capture this information and we don't do this survey every year. We do it, we're doing every, four to five years. Um, and so uh, we are hoping to now, given um, COVID-19, really capture where marinas are and where they think they are going so that we can help um, get some economic information and get some need information um, for this industry. Um, and support these local businesses. So if you could please, the survey is in the chat box. If you are a marina owner operator, please fill out the survey. It doesn't matter whether you're industrial or, or, or just literally a mom and pop with a couple docks. We are trying to capture the entire marina industry and we count yacht clubs, boat clubs, um, any sort of, you know, anybody that basically literally has a, has a management person or a contact and some docks, you know, and, and has some sort of management over, um, a boating facility. So if you could please fill that out or share that with others and um, if you have any mechanism, maybe a newsletter to get that out, please contact us. Um, we have some more slides and even like a letter to go along with it that we could share with you to help promote the survey. All right, with that, um, our final slide is our contact information. So again, as Heather said, you are welcome to contact us at any time. If you would like to partner on any of the projects we've mentioned or learn more about the projects, if you'd like to have us talk about maybe a train the trainer for your staff on either clean boating or even maybe um, uh, clean marina training for your staff. Um, this is a reminder if you're getting our emails and newsletters, um, we actually have a, oh shoot, Heather or Paul, if you're able to, there's a, 
there's a um, subscribe button on the Sea Grant page where you can subscribe for our clean uh, boater newsletter that we send out that has uh, relevant clean boating information. Um, on the other hand, if you are with uh, one of our partners and you have some great events going on that you think would be helpful to share with boaters across Ohio, send it our way and we'll be happy to put it in our newsletter so we can get that out to others. Um, then finally, connect with us. Um, feel free to follow us on Facebook, um, you know, send us a message. Uh, we have a general inbox, so if you have anybody with general, general information, you can reach out to us there, and then our website and, and other information is there. Um, I'm going to switch over here, and I'm going to leave this slide up just so folks have the ability to um, access our emails for a little while longer. And I'm going to bring up and make sure if Paul and Heather can unmute and um, start my video here and see if we can check questions. Yeah, and again, I feel free to use the chat box window, but if, um, you know, if folks feel like, and even if maybe you have a response to this question too, feel free to chime in. So Heather, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to call out and Paul can call out more. Um, I did a screenshot of um, what he has been doing to expand our Facebook um, presence. So he's been doing an awesome job doing Marina Monday, Tune In Tuesday, Water Wednesday, Teach Me Thursday, and Featured um, Event Friday. So yeah, it's, it's been great. Yeah, thank you, Heather. Yeah, we, we try to come up with kind of, I don't know, <laughs> neat ways to highlight different days of the week and some of the things that we're working on. Um, so again, that's a, that's a two-way, um, hopefully a benefit. Uh, it's either content that can be helpful for you, or if you have content that you think would be helpful to share with our marinas and boaters, again, feel free to send stuff our way and we can get it um, into our social media feed. Yep. All right, I'm gonna start going through. Okay, so from Becky, uh, is there a size limitation to be part of the Clean Marina program? Our one sister park at Mary Jane is part of the program. However, our other park has a small boat launch and does more kayak and fishing than anything. Could that be involved in the Clean Marina program? Heather, I may divert to you to just clarify, because I know with a lot of the inland marinas, you've been kind of navigating with that. Um, yes, so all that we kind of ask is that if you have um, a permanent staff that is interacting with your boaters each, um, uh, each day, so, even if you have a reservation sort of office, but that you can educate those boaters. So there's a point of contact 24 seven, well, not 24 seven, but um, most days that would really click the box for being a clean marina. Otherwise we, um, if you're more a paddling sort of lake and you don't have that point of contact daily, um, what we can do is really help you with a clean boater program um, and sort of, you know, reaching your boaters and encouraging them to do those best management practices on your lake and giving you that binder and your um, incentive items toward your boaters. So I can reach out um, and I will email you later. And just if I can add on to that, when I when I talk to people, I kind of joke, but it's we literally have marinas that have 800 slips and a full scale industrial marina that are a certified clean marina. And the same breath, we have there's just one that I always make. There there of like 10 boats, 10 slips and a and a boat ramp. And you know, hey, they have an invasive species sign at their boat ramp. They have a point of contact for us. And and from my perspective, both of those marinas obviously may have a whole slew of different environmental best practices uh, and a quantity that they're implementing, but both of them are doing everything that they can under our program to become a certified clean marina. And so we recognize both of them equally and give them an equal opportunity to participate. Yep. And that's kind of um, initially in 2015, um, it was sort of hard to do that definition, but now that we've done the tiered checklist and we've um, increase the uh, in education and the community outreach like it really you know makes it possible for more marinas. I just want to say it's if anybody has any comments feel free to unmute or say hello or anything or if there's any ideas 
you know, that come to mind. I have a question for you, or more of a comment question, I guess. This is Cindy Koff, by the way. Hi, guys. Hi, Cindy. Hi. Um, yeah, hello. I invited or tried to invite a bunch of the ODNR naturalists to join us today. And the reason why I invited them to try to join us today was um, how can they help you guys? How can how can we get the, the naturalists involved? Um, some of them have little bitty marinas. Some of them have bigger marinas. Some of them are at parks that already ha are part of the clean marinas, such as uh, um, I'll, I'll call out John Hickenbottom at Salt Fork State Park. Uh, he's already part of a really wonderful clean marina. So what what can you guys what kind of advice can you guys give them to get them started? helping out with the clean marina program or clean boating program. Yeah. Um, you? yeah, if I could take that, um, I have talked to several naturalists and really honestly, if we can get them to advertise what they're already doing, like let us know, um, because I know that they're going above and beyond with clean boater training and talking about invasives and natives and things like that. Um, I've also talked to Shawnee and um, uh, State Park and Jenny, but they have, you know, uh, non-common beetles and things that they are actually doing best management practices at their marinas to encourage those, um, uh, you know, whatever, you know, not common <laughs> species. But um, I know as part of their programs, they're already doing the uh, water safety education. So if they just tweak it a little bit and do the clean boater, which I'm pretty sure they're already doing, that is amazing. Um, and because of our tiered program and the education and the community outreach pro um, uh, program, it is easier for us to include those smaller marinas. So if they just get with me um, and I can do uh, an initial site visit, that will really tell us if we can include them in the clean marina program. I know, and Sarah might have a little bit more insight on this. I know, um, you know, we can't, it's, we have to be tricky with including just anyone and everyone because we know that some marinas that are, let's say paddle craft um, only are absolutely doing all of those um, best management practices and not having any oil and uh, you know, boat maintenance interact with their uh, watersheds. But because we have clean marinas programs from you know, Texas to Florida to several uh, coastal uh, bodies of water. We want to kind of remain consistent with the other programs. Um, but like I said, even if we can't certify you as a, you know, clean marina, we can do a lot with making you a clean boater um, reservoir or river um, and do a lot of education with your boaters. Absolutely. Heather, what you said is great. Um, and, and basically, we just to add on to that, it, it, that's exactly it. So we're trying to um, separate it out a little bit, where if you're a certified clean marina, um, but, we, you know, it's, but we count marinas, yacht clubs, boat clubs. Again, we, we have, as long as it's a point of contact, you have docks, um, you count as kind of some sort of recreational boating facility in some way. Um, and then we used to have I would say a much more streamlined clean boater program where it was just the pledge and it was okay we interacted with boaters at the boat shows they took the pledge they got a giveaway and it was great but we're trying to with this like Heather said broader partnership with ODNR Parks and Watercraft say all right you know this is something that I think is more rigorous than just a clean boater pledge if there's education opportunities or ways that we can partner um, it's, it's kind of an in-between. So it's not the full-fledged clean marina certification, but it's certainly not just a, a boater signing a pledge. You know, there's education involved there. So we're, we're still mulling around exactly what, but I, I see, you know, being an opportunity where we could have this, it's, it's essentially, it's a clean boater program um, that we recognize you for having and partnering with us on. Yeah. Awesome. Any other questions before we close out here? And thank you all. I know things are crazy right now, so appreciate your time. 
appreciate your input and feedback. Um, we're open to ideas. <laughs> we want to be there to basically help support you and help highlight any work that you're doing. Um, and, and, and kind of, again, our, our increased partnership with DNR and with all of our partners across Ohio is is our goal is creating a strong overall boating culture, um, clean boating, safe boating, whatever it is. That's, that's our mission to kind of help support that, that entire process. Awesome. I just wanted to also add, I'm seeing some questions privately about um, clean boater information, which Kaylin, I will get with you because I honestly think Lake Hope could now be with the tiered program, a certified clean marina, but also um, signage. I know that that's difficult if you have a pollinator um, plot. I know that if without the educational signage, people think, oh, you're not mowing and things like that. So please reach out to us if we can provide that signage for you. Um, I'm working with the Ohio Pollinator Project to see if we can, um, along with the Department of Transportation, also have those uh, signs at our state parks so they understand why we're not mowing and things like that so that p the public doesn't complain. So let me know if you're doing those projects at your park and we'll help you get that signage. All right. I think that's everything. Last call for any questions before we close out here. Awesome. Okay. Thanks everyone for joining and we'll, we'll say goodbye from the Clean Marinas program. Uh, again, feel free to reach out anytime and we'll follow up with the recording uh, PowerPoint and some of the resources we mentioned today. So take care, everyone. Stay safe, healthy, and sane. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to pause the recording here if I can.